Hello, Jason from 247tech.com here again. I uh, welcome you to another video installment. In this video, we'll show you seven ways to free up space on your hard drive. The first application we're going to use is called Disk Cleanup. It's right inside your Windows. We have Windows 8.1 Update 1, but we've also installed the Win Classic Shell application. So we're able to just to go to uh, Programs, Administrative Tools, and hit Disk Cleanup here. Or we can go to Search, type in Disk clean up and you can see disk clean up here first thing it will do is launch and calculate how much space you might be able to get rid of now your options here are in your downloaded program files your temporary internet files you have some offline web pages I'm gonna get rid of those um, let's see if I had anything in the recycling bin I would get that uh, set up log files I don't need I'll get rid of those system error reporting those are things that I'm perfectly fine getting rid of. So then I'll click Clean Up System Files. It'll run through the process of deleting those, freeing up space on my hard drive. Like I said, this is just the first application that you can use to clean up space on your hard drive. Um, there's actually going to be seven total by the time we're finished. So we'll let this run. While this is running, I'm going to show you real quick under your PC. You can go to your C drive, right click Properties if that's the drive that you're scanning and I can see that I have 30.3 gigs available. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit my start menu, go to programs, and under Windows Accessories there's a notepad. I just want to take a note that 30.3 gigs is how much free space I had before so I can keep track of how much space I was able to free up. So I'm just going to save this on my desktop as space. And then I'll go ahead and go through these seven programs and see uh, how well they do. Okay, now that it's calculated how much information it can possibly clear out, I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. It says, are you sure you want to permanently delete these files? Yes, I do. So we're going to delete those. Well, that's deleting. I'm going to pause, come back. When it's finished, we'll go to the next step. Now that that is completed, if I go inside of my PC again and look at C drive, you can see I have 44.3 gigs free as opposed to the original let's see 30.3 gigs which is a total of 14 gigs that I was able to free up just in those temporary files alone so let's go to the next application and see how much more we can clear up so another way to free up a lot of space on your hard drive is to uninstall applications that may use up a lot of space even a bunch of applications you don't use anymore programs that you don't use anymore when they're small can add up to a lot of space the thing is is normally I would say you can go in Windows 8 for instance you can go uh, to your control panel and then go to your add remove programs option uh, which would be under uh, programs and features and you would select the application that you don't need anymore let's say like Bonjour and I would click uninstall the problem is is Windows add remove programs or program features uninstaller leaves behind a lot of leftover files and folders uh, invalid registry entries broken shortcuts things that build up that are left behind that could cause your machine to have uh, compatibility issues, corruptions, conflicts. I mean there's a lot of things that could happen. So there's a little program that we like to use called Revo Uninstaller. If you run Revo Uninstaller what it'll do is it'll list all the programs just like regular Microsoft's uninstallers that you have in your machine. You then have the capability of let's say let's say we get rid of image burn for now. I would highlight it and click uninstall yes I want to uninstall this. It gives you a couple of different ways to uninstall this. I use the unadvanced option, hit next, and what it'll do is it'll launch the uninstaller that's built in for image burn. That's the same thing that Microsoft uninstaller will do except then it goes the next step. Here's the uninstaller. It ran, it uninstalled, and I hit close. Now when I hit next it'll go through and it'll search for any leftover files, folders, registry items, anything that's related to this application that may have been left behind. So it's an actually a true uninstall of the application. There you go. It didn't find anything on that because it was such a minimum uh, installation and the image burn actually has a pretty good clean uninstaller. But normally what you would see in most files would be a list of leftover files. You would hit select all, next, and it would delete those. 
and then a list of uh, registry entries that you don't need anymore. You would hit select all next and delete those. And once you're finished, you just click finish and you know that you've actually cleaned out as every little bit of the application. One of the other things you have to look at too is that a lot of times it'll need or request to reboot the machine's operating system. And that's just to restart your machine so it can grab some of those files or registry entries that needed to be pulled out that uh, may have been in use at the time. Again, this is another way to get rid of quite a bit of space on your hard drive that you don't need anymore. Another program to help you when you're trying to clean up space on your hard drive is a program called WinDirStat. It stands for Windows Directory Statistics. Uh, you can get it here. Go to Google. You can search for the WinDirStat if you like. Me, I already have a link for it. It's right here. This is what the page should look like. Right about here is a download link. They'll have some what's called mirrors, places that are hosting the uh, download. Let's go to Foss Hub and then download. Here's the installation, downloading. I can open up the folder here under show all downloads. Another way to get to it would be to go to your user folder, open that up, and then your downloads it should be here. Unless you've picked another location, I'm going to delete these files because I know I don't need them anymore. That'll help free up some space. But uh, unless you've downloaded it to a specific uh, different directory location, for me, for me, I haven't changed my default download location, so it sits in my downloads folder. We're going to double click that, run the setup. Are you sure you want to? Yes. I accept the terms of giving away my firstborn child. Let's see, recommended. We have everything here that we want. The default settings look good to me. We'll hit next. The location, your 32-bit default Windows programs folder, not 64-bit. We hit install next and now we're going to go ahead and run it. Now what this program does is it'll look at your hard drive. In this particular case I'm going to just have it look at my C drive and hit OK. It's going to go through and it's going to look at all the programs and files and folders that are installed on my computer. And it'll tell me which ones are using up the most space. That helps me determine which ones I might want to get rid of. If I'm running low on hard drive space then this is another way I want to kind of optimize how I use my machine. One of the things you want to be careful of is not to delete any important system files. Only your personal data files you want to delete. So your, anything that's in your programs folders or in your Windows directory, most of the time you don't want to get rid of those. But if they're personal files like pictures, music, movies, that sort of thing, this is where you would know it's taking up a lot of space. What I love about this program is most of the time I find a lot of files that I never knew I even had on here. But you can read through here. 57.5% of my drive is being used up by Windows, so I'm not going to touch any of these. My programs files is most of my is another what 10.5%. Windows old, I can get rid of that. I don't need that. But I might go in here under users, Neo, and I have other app files in here. Let's say my pictures. I can go in here and delete if there were any pictures or contacts that I might not need anymore, whatever it might be. Kind of gives you a cool looking graphic, color coded. It goes in here, you can take those colors and associate them to the file types. So if you don't know, if you want a quick reference, for instance, you might look for something like a zip file. That's a compressed file. And, and when I select it, it highlights that area that it's stored in and how much space it's taking up. It's a real easy way to get a grasp on what data is in your machine and how much space is being used by each file, folder, and even your programs and such. But like I said, only delete your user folder files, not program files. If you have program files that are using up space, then you might want to reconsider getting rid of certain programs that you don't really use anymore. And you can go into your add remove programs, or better yet, like we mentioned before, using Revo Uninstaller. Okay, so let's move on to the next application. Another great program 
that we like to use for speeding up machines and cleaning up hard drive space is a program called CCleaner. It actually stands for Crap Cleaner. This program, you can go to Google and search for CCleaner. You will get the Periform, Periform, I guess that's how they pronounce it, uh, website. I go with the free version here. And it does everything I need it to do. It's going to download my default download directory. For me, it happens to be in my downloads under my user folder. So it's a 4.6 megabyte file. Now that that's done, next I'll open my user folder, go to downloads, and we'll install this. Yes, I'm sure I want to. I'm going to do it in English. I like to add a desktop shortcut. I'll add the start menu shortcuts. I'll add run cleaner option the recycling bin. I'll add the open cleaner option the recycling bin context menu. I'll automatically check for updates. That's good. And, and of course, I want to enable the intelligent cookie scan. Now, there's an advanced option for the installer. And what it'll do is it'll just step you through each process of the installation. By default, all the default settings are usually just fine. This doesn't install any extra spyware or bloatware. Once it's completed the installation, I'm going to not review the release notes because I've seen that before and there's no reason to see it. I'll next select finish and it's installed. I can close out this window and here's what the application looks like. It gives you a little bit of information about your operating system, what version it is, what type of processor you have, your RAM, and so on. In this particular scenario, we're just going to leave the default settings in place. There's much more advanced options in here. The problem is, is if you're not real familiar with some of the techier end of this information, you could really cause some damage to your computer. But by default, the default settings are pretty much what you're going to want to run with. So first thing we're going to run is the cleaner. You click Run Cleaner. It says, this process will permanently delete files from your system. Are you sure you want to proceed? Don't tell me this again. Of course I'm sure. Say OK. And what it's doing is it's going through Internet Explorer, grabbing temporary internet files, my history, cookies, my URLs, .dat files, and last downloaded location. It'll go into my Windows Explorer recent documents, run in startup menu, other Explorer MRUs, thumbnail cache, and taskbar jump list. Within my systems, it's going to go ahead and empty my recycling bin, get rid of temporary files, things on my clipboard, memory dump files, check disk file fragments, and Windows log files. All this other stuff is more advanced. I wouldn't do it if I were you. I'd do a little bit more research before going along and taking that stuff out. So now we'll go over to applications here and you'll see that it also goes through my Google Chrome internet cache, internet history, cookies, download history, last download location, sessions, it goes into my Windows store, gets rid of the Bing Finance, Maps, News, Sports, Travel, and my Skype Metro app, it goes into these other applications like Adobe Reader, MS Office Picture Reader, Multimedia, it'll go into my Adobe Flash Player, the Shockwave 10, Shockwave 11, my Media Monkey. Microsoft Silverlight, QuickTime Player, VLC Media Player, Windows Media Player. Goes into different utilities like my 7-Zip Compression Utility, my Adobe Air, my Windows Defender, my Antivirus. And then into my Windows and the Microsoft's Management Console and the Microsoft Search. Also into RegEdit for your registry editor if you've been using that. So it goes into quite a bit of information that it pulls out by default. And in this particular case, it pulled out 53.4 megabytes. So that's pretty decent considering how small the hard drive is that I set aside in this virtual machine. So let's go over to the registry. It's going to scan for all of these things. Missing shared DLLs, dynamic link libraries, uh, unused file extensions, ActiveX and class issues, type libraries, applications, your fonts, application pass, help files, installer, obsolete software, stuff that you run at startup, startup menu ordering, your MUI cache, uh, sound defense, and your Windows services. So we're going to scan for any problems that it might have. Once it finishes that, it'll say 100% and you click Fix Selected Issues. If you want to back up the changes to your registry. In your particular case, if you're new to this, I would go ahead and back it up. So you hit Yes, pick where you want to, where you want to store it. I would change the file name. Right here I'll put Back Up to registry cleaning. That's probably a good name for it. Now it's saying that there's 38 errors in here. And this is a new virtual machine I just set up. So that's surprising that there's 38. But don't be surprised. You might have hundreds of thousands of uh, registry errors. And they're not 
things that you have to sweat too much, go ahead and hit Fix Selected Issues. In my case, it's going to do that. If you want to do one at a time, research each one of them because you're you know, super concerned, then do Fix Issue, and they'll do them one at a time. But I just do them all. Hit Close. No more issues are found. Now, this also has some other tools. It has an uninstaller that's kind of like Revo uninstaller. It has a startup option. I can go in here and tell it to shut down things that I don't want to start up every time my computer starts, which is technically in your MS configuration utility, which we'll go over another time. So it's kind of just lumping in multiple applications within the maintenance of your operating system to start with. Makes it easy to navigate and easy to get to through here. File Finder, if you're having trouble finding a file that you need. Um, you can go into System Restore. You may have multiple restores here. You can take a lot of them and delete them if your machine's running uh, fast and smooth and you don't need all those restore uh, points saved. Uh, then you can delete all but like the latest one. And then there's Drive Wiper. If you want to go in here and erase any drives, like a jump drive, like your thumb drive, or an external drive, or another drive that you've just recently installed, uh, you want to switch all your data over to and then wipe the other drive. This will go in and securely uh, delete. If you have anything that you've deleted and you want to make sure it's really gone, this helps quite a bit with that. And then you have some other options here. You can go in and change your settings, cookies. You can include things. You can exclude th things. If there's you know some of the default values, you can change there. And then there's a much more advanced option to go in step by step and change some things. So this particular application is pretty powerful, but it's fast and quick. If you want to do just a quick little cleanup, and it'll free up a lot more space than you might have thought you had in here of uh, temporary files that you didn't need and uh, invalid registry entries and such. We like to use CCLAN on just about every machine that we service. Let's move on to the next application. This next program is called Dupe Guru. If you go to Google and type in Dupe, D-U-P-E, Guru, you'll find an application here that's for duplicate file scanner thing is is duplicate files use up a lot of resources in your machine as far as storage space that you might not realize where you've transferred files and copied them and cut and pasted and you end up with like 12 different versions of the same exact file or during installation some programs use the same file for uh, multiple programs so you keep reinstalling that one file when you only needed like one to start with so this program here will go in and find multiples now remember, you need to know which operating system you're running. In this particular case, all you have to do is go to your computer icon and go to Properties. It'll load, and you'll see under System, the system type. The operating system is running a 64-bit operating system on a 64-bit based processor. The operating system being 64-bit is what you need to know. So now that we know that, we can go to Dupe Guru here, and we're going to pick the Windows version for 64-bit. I download that. Of course, it's going in my downloads folder. Once your download is completed, we'll open it up by double clicking the link in your downloads folder or going to your downloads folder, which in my case is in my user folder under downloads. Once it goes to run, we'll hit next. Looks here like I went to double click, so we're going to cancel that installer. So I'm going to go with this other one. Create shortcuts in the programs folder on desktop, that's fine. Where's the default location? That's good for me. If it's not good, you can browse and select a different location. We'll hit next. Go ahead and install. Yes, we want to. Next, we'll go ahead and launch it. Now here, you're going to hit this little add button to select which files and folders you want to scan. For me, I go right to my C drive and hit select folder because I know certain if you're a little bit more advanced in your tech capability, you can go into your C folder and it'll scan your Windows files, your program files, all those files and find duplicates. Now, now if you're not very tech savvy, you don't want to go in and select those folders because they might find files that are duplicates that need duplicates. Whereas um, if you go into your user folder, for instance, under your user itself, these are your user files, like your stuff on your desktop and your documents, your pictures, music, movies, that sort of thing. It's going to find the stuff more for a novice to be able to easily delete things that you probably are not going to hurt your system by getting rid of. So I selected my user folder and in this particular case it's the Neo one and I hit select folder. Now that's added and I'm going to do a scan. It's going to go through and it's going to collect all the files that have multiples to see 
which ones I might be able to delete. Now this free version of this particular program only will let you delete up to 10 files at a time, but it'll show you all the files that are duplicate. So you can make a list or a screenshot and go through and manu manually delete them if you choose to. Um, in this particular case, I'm going to expand the folders option and see what kind of things are being stored that are duplicates that I don't need. In this particular case, you can see I have one, two, three, four versions of this, okay? So I can get rid of one, two, three of them. Here I've got two of the same images that I know I don't need, so I'll delete that. So it's easy to go through and just pick and choose which ones you can keep and which versions you don't. Some places you want duplicates, sometimes you don't. So that's completely up to you. But pick the ones you want to delete. I can go into my actions and I can hit uh, send marked to recycling bin. Now I can directly delete these files if I want to, but instead I'm going to send it to my trash to make sure that it's not going to cause a problem because I can always go back in there and hit restore in my recycling bin if I need those files back. This particular case, it couldn't remove these because they're application files, but that's fine. Instead, I should probably delete something I really don't need, like these JPEGs. And I can go in here and hit Send Mark to Recycling Bin. Proceed. It sent those, and I hit OK. Now, now I know those two pictures are gone when I have, because they were multiples and I only needed the one. But if for some reason I needed it, I can go right back in here, right-click, and hit Restore, and it'll go right back into that location. So, but in my particular case, I know these I don't need, so I'll right click and I'll hit empty recycling bin. Now I know they're gone for good. It's easy to fill up your hard drive with a lot of duplicate files that you don't necessarily need. So this is a good program to go through there. Let's go to the next application. Okay. So the next thing we're going to talk about is space that's used up by system restore. System restore is so that you can roll back your computer previous settings in case there's um, some settings or an installation that caused a corruption, viruses or spyware or something. Rollbacks and restores rarely work. Um, most of the time you need to back up all your data, wipe the drive and restore the machine from scratch. So I don't even normally use restore. But I'm going to show you where you can reduce the amount of space that's being used to save restore points. If you go up here to your computer, right click, you'll have an option for properties. Under properties you have system protection and from there you have an option for configure. Right here under configure you can disable it all together if you like. Most of the time that's what I do. But down here the usage that's being used right now is 3% which is 1.27 gigs. Now for me this is a virtual machine so I'm not using much space anyways and I don't really need to use very much restore space either. In your particular case your, your drive's probably much bigger and you're going to look at the percentage of how much you use and whatever that percentage breaks down to does that make sense for being able to hold all the data that you're going to need to restore your machine so what I'll do to reduce it is you just take this little slider and slide it over let's say I go down to two percent or I go down to one percent here it gives me an option to delete all the restore points for this drive my machine's running fine so we'll do that made the changes, done. I'm down to the 1% still, and I'm going to hit apply. Are you sure you want to? Yes. Done deal. Now I have more hard drive space available, and it was just simply adjusting that system restore uh, storage capacity size. Like I said, most of the time I just turn mine off altogether. Uh, that's because I'm a tech, and when I go to get uh, Most of the time, I like I said, most of the time I don't even enable system restore due to the fact that I do full system restores with data recovery myself, and I have multiple backups on offline sites or off, and I have multiple backups stored online. Remember that. Remember the Remember that hindsight's always 2020 when it comes to your data. The number one thing any data recovery specialist will tell you is redundancy of backup, 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 and oh yeah, make sure you back it up. And uh, not like on physical drives because they fail, but preferably the newest ways are to store them on 
line, what we consider cloud storage. Um, with your data backed up properly and keeping your machine clean, there really is no reason to have a restore. Let's move on to the next and I believe the last option for cleaning up hard drive space. Option for freeing up some hard drive space. The last and seventh option for freeing up hard drive space on your computer is to disable your hibernation. Uh, this step you pretty much only do if you're really desperate for space because there's really it's kind of important to let your machine hibernate when it needs to. What it does is it takes the information that sits in your RAM or your memory, what you're actually doing right at this moment, and it stores it on the physical part of the hard drive. So it's able to shut down the computer, not be running power, and when it reboots, it loads that file, and then you're right back where you were previously. It's, it's almost like hitting a pause button as far as the user's concerned. That's what they see. The file is actually um, hiberfil.sys, so hiberfile.system. By disabling hibernation, you will delete this file freeing up space on your hard drive. The easiest way that I've found is to use the command prompt as an administrator. So you're going to hit start, and in your search, you're going to type in cmd for command. And you'll see right here under programs, there's cmd. It's kind of like DOS. You right click it, you go to run as administrator, so you have the privileges that you need to execute this, and you hit yes to approve that. Now in here, all you have to do is type power CFG, stands for power configuration. I'm going to put a space, and after the space, I'm going to do the switch, which is forward slash hibernate space off. Enter. Now if you get a clear string like that, you know that you've just turned off your hibernation. Now if I ever need to turn it back on, all I have to do is type in power CFG again for power configuration space and the switch now is going to be for hibernate and I just say on instead. And boom, it's back on. It's that simple. Now you can go through all the Windows interface of navigating to get to where you need to turn things off and your power settings. So there's actually that and a registry edit that you can do. So there's a lot more complex ways to dig down into doing it. But I just like using that quick command. Maybe it's because I'm old school, but I just think it's quick and easy. So that concludes the seven ways to clean up your hard drive space. And I hope this video empowers you to take control of your computer and have it running in an optimized uh, performance. If you have any questions, please feel free to stop by our website at 24-7-TECH.com. So that's 247tech.com with a little hyphen between the 4 and the 7. Uh, you can give us a call at 850-295-1409. Uh, you can shoot us an email at support at 24-7-TECH.com. Uh, we also have an online support form submission on that website. Or you can visit us on Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash Taylor County Computers. Look forward to uh, hearing any responses or replies to the bottom of this video or on our website, wherever we have it posted. And uh, please feel free to suggest anything else you'd like to learn more about. And we keep an eye out for some of the new videos that are going to come out. I'm going to keep pushing these out and hopefully be able to keep helping people out. You guys have a great day.